Hey, C Max here. Wanted to do a review on a uh, new pistol I just got. Uh, one of the local gun shops had a customer appreciation day, and uh, they had a deal on on uh, this pistol that I just couldn't pass up. Haven't shot it yet, but thought I would uh, unbox it with y'all just to uh, check it out. Obviously, it's a Taurus. Uh, it's a pocket what I call a pocket pistol it's a Taurus TCP which I believe stands for Taurus compact pistol model PT 738 comes this little bag says carry on so that's kind of neat and this is it here I can see she's banded closed um, it's 380 auto has a six round magazine, so that'd be seven shots if you put one in the chamber. Uh, if I'm going to literally carry it in my pocket, though, I don't think I'm going to put one in the chamber. I'll just have to rack it. Um, something this small, I don't see the point even doing a holster rig on it, but I might change my mind. Uh, Want to find, you know, find something I could carry a lot more often just so I'm on, armed more of the time. Anyhow, um, got a really good deal on this, or at least I think it's a good deal. Uh, I paid with tax out the door for this $192.59. Uh, shopped around for it, uh, found it on Gun Broker through Davison's. Uh, they wanted a buy now of $210 with $25 shipping. So I figured $25 for the transfer fee and 7% sales tax. So if those all apply to you, then you're looking at about two seventy four seventy out the door. So you know I saved uh, quite a bit one ninety two fifty nine versus two seventy four seventy. So that's a pretty good deal. Uh, you know a lot of people don't like Taurus. I have several of them, and mine have been good. I think this is my fourth one. I've got a PT ninety two AFS that I do have on other video. I have a seven shot uh, model 617T, which is the titanium 357. Um, and then I also have the model 94, I happen to have right here, uh, 22 long rifle. I bought, uh, it's a nine shot. I uh, bought it for just plinking. But, uh, and it works good. Spring on it was real tough because uh, the hammer's a little light on it, but I've got that fixed as well, and I enjoy shooting that quite a bit. But, back to the pistol. Uh, let me run through some specs on it here real quick. I'll tell you what. Let me we'll see what we got in this thing here first. Uh, the keys to the safety thing on it. Uh, I understand why they do that. I'm not a big fan of this. You know, if you, if you have kids and you like guns, and you're trying to keep the guns totally away from your children, I think that's a bad idea. The children need to know about the guns. They need to shoot them. They need to know that they're not a toy. But if you just try to hide them from them, kids being kids, they're going to seek them out and they're going to mess with them when you're not around. And that's a bad, bad, bad idea. So, you know, teach your kids, inform them. You know, when I was a kid, we had guns everywhere, but I knew the difference between a real one and a fake one because I've been shooting since I was five years old. Never played with a real one. We'd go out and make guns out of sticks and and had fun with that but uh you know that's my choice you do what you want it's a heavy responsibility you need to treat it as such but let's see here all right i'm gonna stick this up next to tape measure here so you can kind of get a get a grip on about what it, it is caught back because it's strapped here but i'm not going to cut it yet but the specs say that the PT-738, which is a 380 auto, uh, is a double action only, uh, six in the magazine, one in the chamber, so seven rounds if you want to count it that way. It has a 2.84 inch barrel, so an almost a three inch barrel, and that's pretty good considering the overall length of it's just 5.2 inches. So that's pretty good. Uh, the height of it, they're saying, is 3.75 inches here to here. And the width of it here to here is 0.87 inch. So that's pretty darn good. You know, if you want to look at it like 
like that, it's actually looks like it's less than that. Well, I guess they're being over over cautious here with with all the buttons and everything. Then it would be about 0.87, but it's extremely thin as you can see. Um, it has you know fixed front and rear sights, which on a pistol like this is kind of rudimentary. Um, I'm gonna probably put some white paint on the front just for just some quick target acquisition. Uh, it does not have a safety. It does not have a magazine disconnect. So if there's one in the chamber with the magazine out, it's still going to fire. Now, I've never really understood the magazine disconnect. You know, you're in a stress situation and for some reason you drop the mag. You know, you've still got one in the chamber. So if the bad guy's coming at you, you still got a shot. So, you know, I, I'm not crazy about magazine disconnect. I can take it either way, but on a little pistol like this, I prefer it not have that and not have an external safety. Um, it does have a loaded chamber indicator. It has a five to seven pound trigger pull, the paper says. Actually, it's got a very nice trigger. It's got quite a bit of pull, you know, trigger length to travel on it, but uh, the trigger itself is not bad. Yeah, that's, that's better than what I thought it was going to be. So, so far, I'm kind of pleased with it. I, you know, I expect it to shoot so-and-so. I mean, it's, you're not, you know, it's a very close range type weapon, but that's the nature of the beast. Polymer and coated uh, stainless steel, stainless steel barrel, and 10.2 ounces total with the magazine unloaded. Now they do make a 10 round magazine. I'm going to check on because, you know, I do prefer to have something else to grip, but all in all that, that will function. I can handle that. Like I said, I haven't shot it yet. Uh, I just wanted to unbox it with y'all. Um, Taurus lifetime warranty, always a good thing. Also, this year, if you buy a Taurus pistol, you get a free one-year NRA membership, so that's cool. Um, remember, don't shoot any plus P ammo or anything like that in it. Um, so what I bought is I bought some of the Critical Defense 380 Auto. This is a 90 grain with the FTX bullet. The FTX bullet's got that rubber insert in the hollow point, so that keeps it from supposedly clogging up with with uh, clothing so that you get the full expansion. Uh, I like Hornaday, I like the Critical Defense. I have it in every every caliber that I even, well, every pistol caliber there is, I believe, that I have a gun for. Let's see, I've got the 380, 9mm, 38, 357, 45. I think that's it. And uh, I like them. I have done some, some video I haven't released yet, because I'm still working on it, of uh, shooting milk jugs filled with water just to kind of see the force the impact of the different rounds with the critical defense ammo if you've never shot water jug or excuse me milk jugs full of water do it because it's a blast i just start laughing every time i do it because it's just funny and fun um just remember wherever you're at somebody else's land what have you make sure you clean up your mess don't leave junk laying around that's very very poor manners especially if somebody's letting you shoot on their land. You want to be able to come back. Uh, also, as another perk, in buying any gun, they gave you a free sample of targets. So let my kids pick it out. You know, that way they're involved in, in some ways here and there. So, they, of course, they picked out this zombie target. So we'll have some fun putting holes in that here. Uh, another one of the local gun shops, you know, has free Friday for ladies and that kind of thing. And since I'm the only man in the house and the rest of them are ladies and girls, that's a good thing. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, I will take some film of me shooting it next time I go to the gun club. I'll tack that on to the end. And uh, hopefully I'll have a final review for you. Uh, I expect this to be pretty decent uh, as I plan to carry this a lot just so I'm armed because you know you always need it when you don't have it or don't expect it anyway don't forget all the safety rules every gun's loaded you pick it up first thing you do is check the action keep it in a safe spot never put your finger on the trigger till you're ready to fire you know all the rules 
go with it. Be safe. Have fun. Have a great day. Thank you. Hey, C Max here. Um, I'm going to add another little segment to the uh, new pistol I got, the Taurus TCP PT 738. Um, decided I might as well view this. I'm you know, going to take it down and clean it for the first time. Um, it's right out of the box. Still got the band on it until now. So we're going to pull that out. All right, so let's get that out of the way. First thing we're going to do, move the magazine. And I'm going to drop the slide back. No, actually, I'm going to leave it open. No. What we have to do is we have to get this pin out. Now, I believe you're supposed to do it with her open. We'll give that a try this way. Now, it looks like you can scratch it real easily. So I'm going to use this hook to get it started instead of just like a screwdriver. Okay, there it goes. Let's see if I can pull it out the rest of the way. Yeah, excellent. Oh, by the way, I've been wanting to mention magnetic trays. If you don't have any of these, get them immediately. They are good for everything. Working on the car, working on appliances, working on guns especially. You can mount them upside down. They will not lose metallic parts. All right, let's see here. Boom. Release the magazine catch. She slides forward. And there you have it. It's just a typical automatic pistol setup. Let's take the spring out. It's got a double spring. Interesting. Put that in there. Yeah, you can see all the grease on it. So that's <clears throat> just not a good thing. And pull the barrel out. Pretty simple. Magazine. Slide. Firing pin assembly. All pretty standard. Wow, simple. No problem at all. All right, I'm going to cut away while I just do cleaning. We all know how to clean guns. Don't think you need uh, to watch me do that. It might be a little bit boring. So I'll come back when I reassemble it just to show you real quick how to reassemble it. And with any luck at all, I hope to go to the range tomorrow. If so, I'm going to, I'll get some film of uh, me shooting this thing. Possibly popping some water jugs with the uh, critical defense ammo that I've chosen for it. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Thanks for watching. All right, C-Max here, we're back. Uh, just got the grease off the gun, cleaned out the, the barrel, just get it ready. I hope to go shoot tomorrow. Uh, don't know that I can, but I want to cut some videos. I want to show y'all how I chronograph and do some other things like that that I've been putting off. Um, told you I'm going to start integrating some of my uh, tips, tricks, cost-saving stuff as I go along. been trying to compile it all together and make one video, but really hadn't been able to put it together like I would like, so I just thought I would just do it as I go and then maybe do all, all, all inclusive one at some point. But I uh, wanted to let you know what I did. I'm not going to teach how you clean because that's like firearms. There's so many different ways to do it. Everybody's so opinionated. Um, I'll show you what I did, but like I said, this isn't even a cleaning. This is a uh, degreasing, I guess, if you would. Well, first of all, I used this, which anybody who's been around firearms for any length of time can probably recognize the bottle. Yes, Old Hops number nine. Uh, I like it. Works well, goes a long way, and it's decent priced. 
do have lots of new stuff as well. Um, this is some of the Hops MDL, which is a rust inhibitor, lubricant, cleans, lube, protects. And why do I have it in this funny container? Well, one of my tricks, safe, saving money, you know, the more money you can save, not waste, the more ammo you can buy, the more guns you can buy, the more NRA memberships, it's just more for more. So why waste your money? So this was actually an older can that I had and the aerosol went out in it. So, you know, I'm like, well, I don't want to throw this away. There's good chemical in it. The aerosol is just a propellant. All it moves it, you know, all it does is move it out. So I was like, well, heck with it. So what I did with that, as well as had some gun scrubber, and I like the little glass bottles. This is a plastic container, but I prefer to have a bunch of these. Bunch of break-free CLP. That stuff's not cheap. Even liquid wrench. You know, if I've got some rust issues, I start with this to get the surface rust and stuff off and go from there. It actually cleans fairly well. So, and I've got, you know, I have all kinds of uh, different cleaners and such. I've got the Frog Lube. I've got the M-Pro 7. Both of these I like very much. They work extremely well. Um, I've got Copper Eliminator. Don't use this too much. Uh, do have it though. So, you know, I just, I just use whatever I think I might need. Now, but most of the time it's hops and one of these types of, uh, you know, CLP type things. It's a combination of cleaner, you know, lubricant, protectant, and such. Um, but what I did is I used it in the MDL. So just ran it through the barrel, got it on the outside, just cleaned out the slide, just wiped everything down, wiped the inside of the pistol, wiped everything off, and that's about it. Not a big deal. Didn't do anything to the spring or the pin. Now what I do is, you're supposed to wear gloves. Do have eyeballs on. I've got many, many different sets of eyeballs and I leave them everywhere so there's no excuse wherever I'm at, whether it's here, the loading bench, the computer table over here, uh, my computer desk in the next room where I do all the editing, uh, and sometimes the hand priming. I have safety glasses there. I've got bunches of them. Uh, just got another set. Of the When I bought this pistol at the local gun store for the customer pre appreciation day, they had a Taurus representative there. Got to talking to him, real nice fella. Um, you know, talking about the other Tarses I have and such. And went, after I bought it, went back in and said, yeah, I went ahead and picked one up. And he's, hold on. And so he gives me another set of glasses. Always take them, love them. All right, well, let's just put this back together. Now, what I was saying is I hate wearing gloves. I've got neoprene, all kind of latex gloves, and it just bugs me. Bugs me bad. But another thing that bugs me and if you follow any of my posts on any of the forums that I'm on, you'll, you'll notice I like stainless steel. Well, I like stainless steel because old blue steel has a tendency to rust. You know, I live in Georgia and the humidity can be quite high and stuff can rust before you turn around twice. Fingerprints, big, big enemy of blue steel or steel in general. So, I bought these gloves that are rubber coated. Got my pack of them on sale. I think at either Home Depots or Lowe's for like, I don't know, ridiculous five bucks. And I have a whole bunch of them up here. This is actually the first pair I've ever started using and I'm still using them. Um, you lose dexterity because you've got, you know, the gloves and things. So what I typically do is I'll put the left hand glove on. So as I'm assembling things, I'll 
I'll hold them with this because I don't want fingerprints on them. I don't want fingerprints on the internal parts of something. So I stick it inside the gun where you can't even see it. You put it back together. You put it in the safe. You go pull it out. And next thing you know, well, why is it rusting in here? Yeah, because I touched it. You know, some people don't seem to have a problem with it, but it's just one of my little pet peeves of what I do. All right. So now I'm going to wipe down the outside so I can hold it with this. So we reinsert the, let's get it up here where you can see. So we reinsert the barrel. We put the spring in. And I'm going to do it like this. Okay, just like any other automatic, and boom, slides back together. Now let's see here. We're going to, you've got two tabs on the slide, and they ride on these two rails. Slide her back together, lock it in place. Now let's see here. Let's, now this may be the interesting part. I really haven't read the directions, so let's just see. Put it down and let's see here. There we go. Remember, if all else fails, try reading the directions. I do have them over here. Uh, I looked at them real briefly, but I just wanted to try to, you know, um, stumble through it. A lot of times you learn more by doing it that way. Remember, reloading, disassembly, assembly, repair of firearms. If it doesn't fit, do not force it. You're going to mess something up. Stop, take it apart, go back, read the directions, try to pull something up on YouTube, do something. If you're forcing it, it's not going to be right. It's just not. So that's it. She's back together. Oops, wrong way. That spring's tight there. Not a bad trigger. It's got a lot of tr uh, travel, but the trigger is much better than I thought it was or was going to be. It's actually better than the LCP. I'd been eyeballing LCP or LC9 for quite some time, but to be quite frank with you, I didn't like the trigger. The trigger was hard, in my opinion. Um, then the LC9S Striker Fire came out. It has a sweet trigger, without a doubt. Now this one is a double action only. It's not a striker, but for the pocket pistol, what it is, totally fine. No external safety I like. This one has no magazine disconnect. Um, you know, what, what y'all don't realize, and I hope you never have to find out, um, is stress situation. When you get into a stress situation, and what I mean by that is, you've got to take your weapon and you have to deploy it in a potential life ending scenario. You can describe it whatever you want. I've been through two. Thank God I didn't have to shoot anybody or discharge a weapon. I was ready, willing and able. But let me tell you, it's scary. Now, I've been shooting since I was five years old. I've got a lot of firearms, and people used to ask, oh, well, what do you carry? You know, they're expecting me to say, oh, Desert Eagle or some ridiculous thing like that. And I was like, I carry revolvers. Revolver? You know, oh, that's old, blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you what, when you're scared and you're nervous, the last thing you want to worry about is there one in the magazine. Is the spring in the magazine strong enough to make it feed and operate? Is there one in the chamber? Is the safety on? You don't need all that stuff when something bad's going on. Double action revolver is what I always recommend for someone's first weapon because it's accurate, it's reliable, extremely reliable, and as long as there's ammunition in it, it's going to function. Modern revolvers have a plate so you can't drop it and have it accidentally discharged, extremely safe to handle and have. 
But that's it. I have high hopes for this pistol. We'll find out tomorrow at the range. Well, hopefully tomorrow if I can go. Uh, but I will show you some, some shots of it and possibly not uh, do that as well as the uh, how, do you, how I use the chronograph. All right. That's it for today on this segment of the TCP Taurus PT738, my new pocket pistol. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget the safety. Every time you pick up a pistol, check it. Is it loaded? If you set it down, nobody's around me, nobody's home. I pick it up, check it for our dry fire, whatever. Good habit to be in. Um, as I've said before, and the other one's awesome responsibility, treat it as such. Be careful, be safe, have fun. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, not bad for a 380.